Despite what their moms told them, they just aren't talented enough for radio. Unfortunately, anyone can have a show these days. Sean. Well, I'm pretty hard to figure out sometimes. I can't even figure myself out sometimes, so don't you try to. Joe. You're an idiot. And really a disloyal person. This is the Cuse Militia. Those two unapologetically biased, orange-blooded homers, Sean and Joe. It's the most bullshit thing I've seen in 30 years. Welcome, orange men and ladies. Happy Tuesday. This is the Cuse Militia with Sean and Joe at Cuse Militia on the socials. Go there. Join the militia. Joe, late on that. Sorry about that. Thanks for tuning in and hanging out with us. We appreciate all of you who are still here with us. Listening to recaps and previews of post and future Syracuse basketball games. Okay, the orange, boop, boop. <laughs> the orange, a little gassed in overtime, mm. uh, losing eighty-eight to seventy-nine to UNC in Chapel Hill. UNC came out in overtime um, um, on fire all of a sudden. Cole Swider nearly scoring half the points for Syracuse with his thirty-six, and what could have been? You wonder, right? Mm. Well. Don't we all? You'll hear from us. We'll hear from you in fan feedback. And the Orange will take on Miami this Saturday on Senior Day in the Dome at 1 o'clock. T- uh, TV currently is ESPNU. We'll let you know what we think about all of that. And we will talk um, talk about this game a little bit. I don't know how far. I am so unorganized right now. That was a great game. It was an excellent game. It's an excellent game, but you know when they're like that, you just <laughs> you just want to capitalize on what you've yeah. worked for for 40 minutes, and with 14 seconds left, uh, we had a little mishap. So, um, mm. I'm sure we'll talk about that. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, for me, it's the focal point of the game. For me, I mean, I know obviously there's a lot of things, um, and we'll get into them, but. That crushed me. It curb stomped me, if you will. I was sorry you felt that way. <laughs> I was just like, okay. Um, you didn't? No. Oh, I did. I, I just, I, I just. I mean, I a little bit. I don't know. It just, it killed me. Um, after fighting to get back in that thing, and as quick as they did it towards the end of that game. You know, just a heartbreaker. Those ones are tough, man. Those ones are always tough. So, yeah. I mean, knowing where we're going anyway, most <laughs> likely, it still hurts yeah. because we're looking at the, you know, the 52 year record of winning seasons kind of on the, on the teetering edge here. And it's true. That's concerning to me. So, <laughs> uh, it was going to take a lot of pressure, I feel like, off of, fans like me and coach and you know probably some of the kids maybe a little bit too probably not so much the team but i know the way i feel and uh, it's it's just uh, just something you don't want to see as a fan but if if it is to be it is to be and it is nothing we can do about it but uh with that said um let's hear what coach had to say after the loss Frank's had a lot of trouble trying to figure out what he can do. I thought Barama was really, really terrific tonight. And, uh, you know, Joe, Buddy, uh, had to play 45 minutes. Really proud of them, what they did tonight. It was an unbelievable effort, and they had to make a long three to take the game at the end. Jim, could you go over that inbound play at the end of regulation? What you were looking for there, inbounding under your own basket? Trying to get Buddy out and uh, slip Barama, try to get Buddy out, and Cole came up top. I guess Joe didn't see him. And uh, four seconds, it's going to be hard probably to get a real good shot anyway. But... In some ways, by going out of bounds, we got back, got, were able to get back and set our defense up, which was, that's a good part of it. But Joe didn't see Cole. We had a timeout. 
he'd asked me in the huddle, if we had one, we had one. I thought he'd take it if he didn't think he had something. Well, we fought hard, but we've won three or four close games, and we've lost three or four close games. That's, that's the way the basketball world is. I think, uh, you know, there's no question in my mind that this game, Notre Dame, Virginia Tech, are all one-point games or overtime games until the end. And if Jesse's here, I think we got a good chance to win all three games. Without Jesse, it's, I think it's really hard for us to win those games. We're getting beat more and more on the boards now um, and inside defensively. We can't stop people, in, you know, Baco, Manic inside. Um, pretty much the same thing all over again with Duke. Hey, Jim, you mentioned um, Judge Ryder playing 45 minutes a game. Um, do you expect Simon Torres to be back for the game against Miami? I don't know. I don't know. Haven't got a medical degree. And I haven't seen him in two days now. Jim, I just wanted to go back to the inbound fight. You know, it's not the first time this year you've had trouble getting the ball in in an end game situation. It's the fir first time on the end line. First time on the end line all year. It's our first turnover probably on the end line this year. So it's not the same thing? It's not the same type of situation like it was when you're on the sideline? It's a whole different play. And that was off them, by the way, too. <laughs> Again, the effort these guys made out there tonight is, was monumental. It was a monumental effort against a team that's fighting for its life and to get, be in the tournament. And they brought it down to the last play. It was a unbelievable effort and uh, I couldn't be more proud of these guys. All right, the montage is brought to us first by Athletic Greens. Tons of people take a multivitamin, including me and Joe. It's important to choose one that is top quality. With one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients helps support gut health, nervous system, immune system, energy, uh, recovery, focus, and aging. It's lifestyle friendly, adapted to a wide range of diets. It contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no chemicals or artificial anything. Plus, it costs less than $3 a day. It's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially during cold and flu season. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you one free year of immune supporting vitamin D in five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash sports drink. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash sports drink. Take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutrition insurance. Colorcast is a live audio only sports talk platform free to download and use. Talk to us, other fans, athletes, and insiders in real time. Perfect for watch parties, debates, post-game breakdowns, and reacting to breaking news. Which uh, breaking news today. Breaking news. Julie Bayheim robbed at gunpoint at, at Destiny. Breaking news. Unbelievable. All you need to do is download the ColorCast app free in the iOS or Android stores. Create a profile, link your Twitter, and join the league or group. Follow us at Cuse Militia to be notified when our room goes live. And like I have said before, look, maybe we'll do some, some post-game stuff for the postseason. Uh, if that's a thing. If that is a thing, we shall try. You have my word. Thank you. Athletic Greens and Color Cast. All right, Joe. Um, okay. Sir. Well, we're well. Let's just go ahead and talk about talk about the inbound stuff now, and get that okay. out of the way. Okay. Um, there's what 14.1 seconds left. I think there's four <sighs> seconds on the shot clock, if I remember yep. right. Mm -hmm. Joe throws it to Buddy's foot. And there's nothing Buddy could do. He can't move that right. fast. And he basically threw it away. Had a timeout. Talked to Coach about it. Um, 
probably maybe should have come up with something else. We all know the play, right? The 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 one we normally see with Brahma. The buddy inbounds to Brahma. Brahma handing back off to Buddy. Buddy taking the three. Joe's out there. They had something with Swider, coach was saying. So obviously Swider is hot. Uh, failure all around. Unfortunate. Would it would we have won the game up by one with a four second shot clock and fourteen seconds left? I mean, who knows? We'll never know, right? But we didn't even get the shot. So coach says that, well, you know, some good did come out of that. We did get to go get our defense set, right? And he uses that as some closure for himself. It didn't make me feel any better. But I guess he's got a point. But, you know, Joe, what do you think? It's, I think it's just all in hindsight. It's easy to blame it on that play because uh, as he talked about later on in the in, in the presser, that there was a couple, couple years back against Clemson, there was a, something like that, some yeah, type of situation. Yeah, a fast break. And they ended up missing. And, you know, obviously, uh, I mean, North, North Carolina out-rebounded us. So, you know, if Buddy gets it, puts up a quick shot or a bad shot, then you're talking now they might get a rebound. Now they have numbers. Um, and it might make it easier for them to, to get the bucket because they were only down one. So in this situation, you know, it allowed them to at least set up a, you know, a defense and, you know, North Carolina had to make the shot. And even talking to North Carolina fans today, um, that wasn't the guy that they wanted to shoot. And um, they didn't look at that as like a good shot. I didn't either. There was a lot of time left. They allowed them enough time to go down and Joe Girard go down and, and, and take that shot. Um, obviously, I would have rather Joe use the timeout to maybe draw something up a little bit differently. Um, but all in all, that game or that play didn't lose us the game. Well, I want to be clear. I didn't say it lost us a game. I said, I, I, said, I said it felt like I just got curb stomped. Oh, the thing is, is this, right? Is that it didn't lose us the game, but like I think, and, and Coach, he has a point about not having Jesse in the three other games, you know, that we could have, what it could have, should have, you know, and I think that we knew that that was going to happen when, when Jesse got hurt. Um, but when I look back at this season, I feel like that's what I'm going to see. Like, I feel like it's like Charlie Brown with Lucy in the football, right? Like, we're so close to yeah, just getting so that W. What, what was and, it? I saw a graphic pop up, and I believe it was three and five coming into that game with with games within so many points with four minutes left was the graphic I think I saw. So now we're three and six, right? So we've pulled off three of them, and we've lost, lost six of them that close. So to your point. Yes, I mean there's there were six that we were in every in all those games and just came up short for one reason yep. or another. We came up short. You mentioned yeah. Je- you mentioned Jesse. Um, you know, this brings us right into the next the next thing. Actually, talking about that graphic and and what Coach said. You know, he says we won three or four. We've lost three or four. Well, I believe it, if I'm not mistaken, it was it's it's three and six now. So with that said, that's nine games. That's a good chunk of the season that all of this is hinging on, right? Especially with a mm-hmm. couple of the bad losses, right? Um, we're getting killed on the boards now, Joe. 44 to 30. Um, without Jesse in there, it's terrible. Frank, had, Frank comes out the first game Jesse's hurt, and he, and he, and he, and he pats us all on the ass, and he tells us it's going to be okay. And... Uh, it's not okay. He lied. <laughs> he lied. We th- mm-hmm. we thought it was going to be a lot, a little bit better than it than it was. You know, he sh- obviously has showed Glenn. We had like 15 rebounds in that game or something stupid like that. Um, he's just not. Uh, he's just. You know, these are tougher teams too. To be fair, right? But right. he's just not. Um, he's just got a lot to learn. Let's put it that way, okay? And and coach gives it to him. Gives him the business every every press conference about it, but. Uh, Jesse was the key down low. Every, I mean, it's so easy. We're getting hammered with fouls and points in the paint down low, and it's and getting killed on the boards. It's just, it's terrible. It's a terrible combination. I think they said I saw, I read something, or heard something that said Duke scored like fifty points in the paint on us. Yeah. So, uh, and, and like Coach said, you know, this felt very similar, except for we actually shot better and we right. we kept it close, right? No, and also, I mean, Duke hit 15 threes and North Carolina hit 14 threes. So, I mean, both these teams, um, 
you know, exceeded expectations as far as the three pointers are concerned as well. So um, there's a little bit to go with that too. But yeah, I mean, this is you're talking about. I mean, one of the, two of the worst teams, right? Um, to not have your starting center. I mean, Baycott, and Mark Williams, those guys. You know, Manic, Banchero. I mean, we've seen this, right? Um, these are two of the better teams as far as big men are, are concerned in the ACC. And um, I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, I, it's this might have happened even with Jesse Edwards as far as the rebounding is concerned. So, uh, Well, I don't think the, disparaging, the disparity would have been 14. But I think you're right. I mean, obviously, Baycott's playing at a very high level right now. I mean... Yeah, he's beyond- 22 double-doubles. Yeah, 22. Okay, so... Yeah, I mean, I think we I thought it was 20 or something like that on the last show. I just heard something, you know. But, yeah, I mean, he's an amazing player, right? Caleb Love, uh, Leaky Black, we, we don't expect him to play, right? We didn't even expect didn't. him to play. Um, and he comes out, and he hits two threes, and it totals eight points, you know, and he played a good game, and he was all over Buddy. He was having a very hard time with him defensively. So, mm. um, you know, uh, just to... A lot of shoulda, woulda, coulda. When you look back, Joe, to your point, I mean, really, that's what it was. It shoulda, woulda, coulda. Uh, you just, know, it, the, ifs and buts were candy and nuts, we all have a Merry Christmas. It just couldn't, just didn't pull it out when we needed to pull it out. Yeah. Yeah, that's really what it comes down to. But I think that also, I mean, I think some, some teams have hit some big shots against us. I mean, as I said before, I mean, mm, North Carolina, good. Caleb Love had three points, I believe, going into that last shot and it wasn't really a good shot. And I, I mean, North Carolina fans, it was one of those, no, no, no. Okay. Yeah. And even then they left too much time and Joe went down and actually hit a shot. You know, I didn't know if we were going to use the timeout or what was going on, but by the way, a, a redeeming moment for Joe. I mean, let's give credit where credit's due. Right. And when he's doing that and he's dribbling all over the damn place and I'm, he's chucking that up from, you know, a corner like that. I'm just like, Oh Lord, please. Game's over, and then he, he swishes the thing, and then you're back in love with Joe again. It's a love hate relationship. Mm, I Joe mean, at that situation though, I almost feel like I wish that we kind of. I mean, I know he went and he put it in overtime and stuff, but with how many games we've been playing, five games in ten days now, I almost wish that they shot a three and it was just you either made it in one, or you just missed it because overtime I mean, was I awful. I hear you. I hear you. Overtime was, <laughs> was bad. Uh, just to just to stick up for Mike Waters, I understand. You know, him comparing that inbounds play to Wake Forest. But, you know, I don't know. No, he he mean, wouldn't let go of it. He, he was the one that asked both of, both of those questions. Those, yeah. are, those are both my questions. But, but, but Beheim, he's right as far as that's concerned because, like, er, like depending on where you are in the court, oh, I believe, no, I, the I, angles and everything like that. So that was a completely different pass. I agree. And, 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 I feel, and I feel like Mike should know that. But in his defense. And we've been I, I very successful. Yes, very. Yes. As far as right there. Yeah, but know, it's been Buddy inbounds in the ball. And, yeah. Well, I, even Jesse got into it a little bit. Once he got his confidence, he was faking it and going and getting buckets too. So. Yeah, um, Brahma with a little bit more dribble action again too, a little bit in that <laughs> game, which always makes me nervous, but he did a good job. Uh, by the way, we would be remiss if we didn't mention Brahma's 12 points, three three rebounds, but he goes down, right? And you think to yourself, "Oh, get the hell out of here!" Mm-mm, that's, I thought. I thought it was I, that. Bro. I thought it was his knee. Everybody did. That, yeah. And then uh, I'm like, "There we go." Here it's twisted. It's the cherry on the, top. Here, right? yeah, yeah, exactly what I was thinking. And then they show the replay, and it ended up being his ankle. And I'm like, "Ah, no, he'll be fine." Uh, so as long as it's not his knees, then uh, I, I've got to assume he's going to be fine. But you're right, Joe. Coach finished up the presser talking about the effort of the guys, and they were gassed. And you know, you can criticize that or whatever, but I think Joe and Buddy, uh, Joe, Joe, well, Cole followed out with two minutes left. He would have played all 45. Jimmy played 41. Buddy and Joe played all 45. And yeah, I think they were a little tired. Four, uh, five games in nine days. You said 10 days, I thought it was nine. No, nah, something like that. Okay. But I but mean, even so. That, why haven't we even talked about Cole? Well, I mean, it's coming. I mean, there's a lot of that I know fan it's feedback. Coming, but... So I was leaving it. Why? Okay. I'm just saying, because he was the, 
All right. If it's coming, it's coming. But, yeah, the effort was there for sure. Uh, I mean, there's been games in the past. Um, don't get me wrong. I still think that this is one of the worst 50-50 ball teams. Oh, yes. Yes. In, in a while. Yes. Um, well, so Yes. And, okay. What do I you... don't know if that's just an instinctual thing or if it's really just – because it's hard for me to think that you're going to put that much effort into all – Parts of the game. There was a couple of them. Then that, all of a sudden, the 50 50. But there's a couple where you're like, go get it. There was one that right rolled there. right by Joe and he just watched it. Dude, there's, it's so frustrating. Because <laughs> it's so frustrating. Yeah, they give so much effort because it was, it was an effort game. I mean, they came out, I thought they played better defensively, even though North Carolina was shooting better in the second half. But um, they were putting together some, some good defensive trips and, and stopping them. And like you said, they came back kind of late where, I mean, when they when we started off six or six and we did all and then they came back and then took a five point lead going into half I'm like oh this is it you know we gave the first half effort and we're gonna come out and then they're gonna blow us out right and it didn't happen that way they and it was pleasantly it. surprising and you know again you mentioned it too North Carolina a team that's still fighting for their um, you know NCAA tournament situation so yeah. Uh, came out in the second half on a 10-1 run, I believe, to, to get that thing tied back up. So, um, all in all, very disappointing, obviously. But as soon as we hear from you, we're going to move on from this. And we're going to forget about it. And we're going to look forward to Miami. But first, it's time to hear from you. It's time to hear from you. The Loud Mouths from the Loud House. You guys know what to do at the end of every game. Head to the socials and I'll be there. Prompting you to leave your thoughts. Good, bad, or ugly. Remember the good, bad, and ugly I used to do that? That was actually kind of fun. I wish someone would do that for us and we could go through it. That would be excellent. Fan suggestion. Not me. For you guys. I mean... I like he- I would like to hear the good, bad, and the ugly. It's fun. I think it's fun. You know? Especially coming from someone else. I don't want to have to do it. Uh, anyways, look. Fan feedback is brought to us by Athletic Greens. Tons of people take a multivitamin. It's important to choose one that is top quality. With one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients... Helps to support gut health, the nervous system, immune system, energy, recovery, focus, and aging. It's lifestyle-friendly, adapting to a wide range of diets. Uh, it contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no chemicals, or artificial anything. Plus, it costs less than $3 a day. It's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially during cold and flu season. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is go to athleticgreens.com slash sports drink. That's, again, athleticgreens.com slash sports drink to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance color cast. Is a live audio only sports talk platform free to download news, talk to us, other fans, athletes, and insiders in real time. Perfect for watch parties, debates, post game breakdowns, and reacting to breaking news. All you need to do is download the ColorCast app. It's free in iOS or Android stores. Create a profile, link it to your Twitter, and join the league or group. Follow us at QS Militia and be notified when our room goes live. Like I said, we will try to go live when uh, QS, if QS. Reaches the postseason. We did this last year. But always, always head to the... the oh, I'm sorry. Unmute. Head to the green, green room uh, for fan feedback. Every game, you can join us there the day after the game to talk about your thoughts, as we will do right now. Okay, Joe. <sighs> Yeah, so Julie Baham was robbed at gunpoint at Dusty Malta. Did you hear me say that? Yeah. That's wild. I saw that. What the hell is going me. on? It doesn't surprise me either, being uh, being Destiny. I mean, it's like a day that ends in Y. It just happens to someone be someone in the community, well-known someone. 
right? Uh, let's start with Peter, I guess. On Facebook, can't win a game at the end. Nothing has changed. The record says it. The record says it out. NIT. Well, I mean, at this point, that's. <laughs> I hope we make the yeah, NIT. At this point, that would be a uh, that would be hopeful. I feel. <laughs> and with that said, we got to do something with Miami, and going into this tournament would be, you know, much needed, right? So we've lost three in a row. I guess we could look at it like this, Joe. Play the odds, right? So we've lost three in a row, uh, three in a row, and you know you could say, well, it's time for Syracuse to win. You know, the last time they lost three in a ro- in a row, they beat Pittsburgh. You know, whoop de doo though, right? Uh, so, anyways, <laughs> <laughs> they did win. They have not lost four in a row this year. So, with that said. Uh, let's hope that it doesn't happen now. I guess that's what I'm getting at. Nate, on Facebook, 40 minutes were pretty okay. Huge night for Swider. This team just struggles to close out games. Yes, as I mentioned, I think we're three and six. Closing out games under four minutes with, you know, keeping them close. I forget the number, guys. Forgive me. Um, I got to start taking notes during games or something when I see these graphics. But, yes, Joe, talk about Cole. Dude scores 36 points. So almost half of yep. Syracuse's points. He goes off from the three-point line, seven for 11, and seven for 10 from two, and just an amazing effort. He couldn't miss for a while there. It was just taking the air right out of the, uh, the Dean Dome, and it was devastating. And it was, oh, a, yeah. it was a pleasure to watch. We've been waiting for it, waiting for it. Cole's been coming on you know, late in the season and he's been playing great ball, but he was on something last night, boy. Let me tell you. Amazing game for Cole nah. Strider. Well, it was one of those games that Beheim was talking about, right? Yeah, when we've one of these days for. he's gonna hit eight or and, ten of them. And and that's the thing is is that it came with a loss, right? So I mean this is a situation where I mean in this game I look at it like definitely with Jesse we would have won. But even on top of that, like is 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 this is how bittersweet it is, right? Because it's a situation where we weren't even in that position without Cole. He had an amazing game. What he went for 14 for 21 overall. Yeah. I mean, that's crazy. 36 points. Two. He almost had the he almost had the record for an opponent's uh, most points scored for an opponent at a Dean Dome. It was 37. Oh, shut 36. up! Oh my yep. gosh, I did not know that. That sucks. And the worst thing about that was we went seven of eight from the free throw line, and he was the one that missed one. Yeah, he went one and for two. So when you look at it, it's so bittersweet because if he makes that, then we we win technically. If you look at the uh, the scores of it, right? Because that's one extra point, and we went into overtime. So Joe Girard's that would have been a buzzer beater. Right? Yeah, would have been that would have been a buzzer beater W. Way to uh, just. But he did so much, show. right? So and it's just it's one of those things where I mean he had his career high. What when he hit twenty three? I mean, that's how yeah, much 21 of a, was his previous career high. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, when he hit the t- to 23, he had the previous high. He went to 36. And, you know, it's just one of those things anyway. where we lose and it's frustrating, although a great game. Um, but, you know, you just like N- NC fans, you know, the UNC fans at work today, like, oh, that, that one guy, just, he just couldn't miss. He just couldn't miss. You know, he plays like that. You guys got a chance. And I'm just like, yeah, that's kind of what we've been thinking. I mean, this is the first time he's done this. <laughs> so To that extent, um, yeah. I mean, he's had some good games. Ex- yeah. He's had some good games, but nothing like this, right? No. Um, so, again, it's just another thing of, like, what could have been if this is something that he could – I mean, I'm obviously not asking him to do 36, but if he could have put up – I mean, I feel like he could be way – he could have been way more consistent throughout the season, I guess is what I'm, is what I'm saying. I mean, he had 14 minutes and zero points against Duke. Yeah, and how many min- how many minutes was it again at Duke? It wasn't much. He was not. He did not play much. 14, 14, 14 minutes. Oh, is that what you said? Okay, zero points. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and what a difference, you know, two days make. So, uh, unfortunately, yeah. a loss, and you know, Buddy really never got going too too much. You know, he scored 14, but he never really got going and he was just face guarded all night and was having a hard time. So that obviously 
helped him out. Joe wasn't great. Jimmy wasn't great. Um, no. So Jimmy was great as far as helping us get it across the. Y- yes, I mean they used court. him. As, he's used him as a point guard for a little bit because Joe was having so much trouble. By the way, I said um, Brahma scored twelve points earlier. It was eight. So that's yeah. my that's my bad. Uh, Robert on Facebook, it just hurt. What an effort! Nine games decided by five or less, and they only got three of them. What could have been? Yeah, the three. Um, yeah, what could have been? What could have been? So I was right. So he says nine games just decided by five or less, and we only got three. So yeah, we ended up yeah. three and six after that game. So yeah, I mean, we can sit here and dwell on this. I think we all know at this point what we've got and what I think it should be um, recovery time. Uh, we will see, obviously, what we've got after this Miami game. But um, at this point, I'm just playing to stay above 500 and make the NIT. And I've never right. had I've never had those goals in my well, life that's, as a Syracuse and that's fan. the difference between you know winning six out of the nine instead of three. Right. Yeah. I mean, you reverse you know it. I, mean? and I like, guess you that's still really got a shot. where we are. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Even if you look at the you know take away Colgate, Georgetown, whatever. Right. We have the Wake Forest game. We have the Miami game. We have the Virginia Tech game and the Notre Dame game and the North Carolina game. You know, obviously those last three were without Jesse. But you switch this three wins one way, and now you're talking about 18 and 12, and now you're on the bubble. Yeah. With a game at home against Miami, which could get you into the tournament or closer to the bubble. And then the first game, you know, I mean, you get to 20 wins, and then you lose to Duke again. You're in the bubble. They've lost so many ACC tournament games, too. It's just like we can't ever bank on a good ACC tournament run. Yeah, that's true, too. You know. I mean, it's the woulda, coulda, shoulda, you know, and, and and realistically, we're not that far. Like, we weren't that far away, especially when we figured out, when we started to figure it out. I mean, you saw the whole season, everyone was trying to figure out the defense playing with each other, and then it started clicking, and then the injury happened. And like I said, don't want to make excuses. You want to go next man up, and um, still to be able to compete like we did last night was definitely admirable, for sure. Yeah, I mean, especially I that- in, in the Dean Dome. I mean, look... Hats, hats off to the fans, first of all, the UNC fans, for packing that place. They did a fantastic job. They were extremely loud. Um, the place looked all blue. I think I saw maybe three orange shirts in there. So uh, smothered, smothered, smothered anything, you know, any Syracuse fans that would have been there. Our buddy Michael, by the way, um, at if not now when 84, the world's longest Twitter handle, uh, he was there with his son. And it was took his son to his first game, so uh, I thought that was pretty cool. I remember taking my yeah. kids to their first game. It was at the dome, but you know he lives. I guess he lives around you, Joe. But um, to be able to go there and experience mm-hmm. that, I was thinking that too while I was watching that game. Actually, I'm like, you know, it is really cool to go to other territories and experience their stuff the way that they do it, and to kind of. You know, it's tough. It's tough, especially to lose, but it's it's good yeah. to experience and, and and soak some of that in. So good on Michael for doing that. But man I've been at, at the Wake Forest games, at the NC State games. Obviously I haven't been to a Duke game, Cameron. Those those tickets are tough. Did you see that? Cheapest ticket is like twenty nine hundred right now online. No, but that's a for uh, price. the UNC Duke game. Yeah. Oh and, yeah, um, yeah. For Duke to dominate UNC like they did last time they played them. I mean, yeah. yeah well, for much it's, but yeah, I haven't been I to know. North Carolina either. And I mean, normally we play North Carolina on like a Wednesday night at nine o'clock, and I'm not doing that. But I mean, that was good. That was a good crowd for them at, on a Monday at oh, yeah. seven, right? I mean, it was a good crowd for them. So, um, I mean, give credit where credit's due, I suppose. Uh, Joe P on Facebook should have won. Joe and Buddy were looking gas in overtime. No defense rotations. Our hands up. New day. Same results. Mean kind a little bit, yeah. I mean, I did notice, I did notice the rotations obviously got slower, especially on that three ball. Joe was a little, the last a one. lot slow on that one. Yeah, the Caleb Love yeah, one that still wasn't that, even a good shot. I I know, and that's the thing. He's so far out. It wasn't a good shot. You just expect to, to fight for a Dude, rebound. He had three points up to that point. That guy hit a three and then scored eight of his fourteen points, and I think it's eight. Yeah, eight of his. 14 points in overtime. Caleb Love had 21. Sorry, no, sorry. He had 21. Sorry. 
Well, he had eight in overtime. Okay. And he had a three right before. I mean, obviously. So he is 11 of his 21 were the last three point shot and then overtime. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I mean, I guess you can still get your hands up. But my point is, is that Joe was late on that rotation. Well, and, I mean, and, and, it was a part I. <sighs> Folks, you see what I've got to deal with? <laughs> you see what I've got to deal with? I mean, as if, you know, I'm gassed in overtime right now with Joe. Uh, all right, here we go. Dominic. On the Facebook. Is this the last Facebook comment? Yes, I believe so. Sentimental Dominic here, and this is a, this. I'm, I'm bringing this up because we talked, we hit on this last episode, and um, it is, you know, it's one of those things. There's nothing in the world like coaching your kid. I had the honor of winning a city championship with my son a few years back, and it was the best and most fun coaching I've ever had. I was an assistant coach on his varsity baseball team, and I couldn't imagine the pain coach is feeling right now. I'm telling you, he is blaming himself, even with the flaws the team has. What the three of them dreamed would be a legendary story is, hold on, crack screen, story for them is turning into be the coach's worst statistical season of his career. I really feel terrible for him. I'm not sure he wanted to go. I'm, I'm sure he wanted to go out on top with his boys. Yeah, and well, here's the thing with players and coaches. They're, they're gonna, that's not going to hit them until it's done, I don't think. I mean, of course, they're going to think about it a little bit here and there, but... For the fans, I think, fans like me, okay? I'm just going to speak about fans like me who are nostalgic with Syracuse and a sentimental fan as well. And to watch, like I said last show, see Buddy and, and even Jimmy as little kids, babies almost, really, and to have them both on the team playing, um, this is you know you just you just want better you just want better you want this thing to you want this thing to be able to finish on a on a high note with the three Bayheims and it's just not going to right so it's not always a fairy tale ending it sucks i'm sure it'll hit coach eventually but this is sports too you know it happens right they do have an opportunity or had an opportunity to come back and try this again next year they're like you know what we tried it it was a valiant effort. Things didn't fall in place, and the, the the stars didn't align for this. At the end of the day, both of his kids played their asses off, you know? So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's not on them. I mean, all they can do is really just play, right? And if anything, you know, the coach is going to probably think a lot about some of the decisions and, and what he could have done better to make it better for his sure, kids. You, more you, anything, yeah. Right? We, we second guess coach more this year on certain things than I, we ever have on the show. And before the show, I, I mean, you know, I don't even remember second guessing. It's just watching basketball. If anything, I was second guessing was football decisions back then. Yeah, you know, we gotta remember. Maybe, maybe it's us. Maybe it's maybe it's the Q's Militia podcast because uh, everything was fine and dandy uh, until we started this. To some extent, we've had some good years though as the Q's Militia podcast. But yeah, I get it, Dom. I think the fans are feeling all of that. At JJ Valerio, SC tough loss on an incredible effort by Swider. Really hope they get a W Saturday. I don't want to see Jimmy B have a losing season, especially with his two sons on the team. Uh, two. To Dominic's point and our point, yeah, I mean nobody wants that. It's 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 frustrating. It's um, just just one of those things, man. When you sit back and you watch, there's nothing you can do as a fan except for pray. Maybe get down on your knees and pray a little bit. Pray to God we don't have a losing season. I'm to God. At at RBY Tuesday day something like that, Andrew. Andrew's a good dude. He's participated in, in, in some buy-seller holds in the past. He's been quiet, though, on the Twitter this season. How, how in the absolute MF can you lose multiple games because you don't inbound the ball? I mean, it's a valid point, but Joe hates it. Joe hates it. I'm just saying Joe hates that point. I, here's the thing with it, Joe, and this is what I said. We didn't lose the game because of that. Like, okay, we went over that, right? Uh, but what could have been? I mean, what could have been? I mean, it could have been worse, but, you know, we ended losing the game anyway. So what could have been? 
Yeah. I mean, that's just where I'm at. Especially that Wake well, Forest game. That really sucked. The way, yeah, I would like say the, the Wake Coast Forest one. That was one. not on them. Yeah, right. True that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on that since that game. Yes, exactly. That is that is so true. It's so true. Any comments, Joe? Or you just want to sigh? You sounded like you were going to say something, and then you stopped. Is that it for you? Are you done? No, no, no. I'm not done. It's just <laughs> this season's been tough, obviously. So, so Joe, really, really, it's really like I can sit here sometimes, guys, and I can I can do my best to. I don't want to say fake it because I'm not faking. Okay. It. Here we but are. but I do a little better. This is my therapy. Okay, I escape the realities of work and my children screaming and demanding things from me. As Joe, what do you got a waitress in there? Huh? Something's no. going on. Joe, Joe keeps looking past the cameras. Some something's going on. So that's probably why he's distracted. But I can come here and, and turn on turn on the, you know. Turn on that, put on the happy face, and try to be optimistic here. Whereas Joe just is like, if he's, if we experience a bad game, he gets to kind of be a bump on a log. Kind of like when uh, he, you know, when we beat Clemson. Okay, here's one. When we beat Clemson, I came to this microphone so excited. I was freaking so pumped to do the show. Well, Joe was hungover, so guess what? We didn't have any fun because Joe was hungover. So, yeah, that's good. You had fun the night before. And at, during the podcast. I'm sure you did. At Turnasty315, let's talk about the inbounds. <laughs> inbounds bounce pass to the corner with 15 seconds left, and we're up one. Good times. What well, we just did. Let's not. Let's not. At Bizix24, I would love to have seen what the end of the season would have been like with Jesse out there. So many close games. Yeah, you mean you take, mm. away, you take away, you know, nor, well, you take away Duke, I think. Right. Is that fair to say? I think it's fair to say. Yeah, North Carolina obviously was close, uh, especially in regulation. Notre Dame. Um, and then you got to kind of, you know, that's pretty much it, right? Because he was Virginia hurt. Tech. He was hurt at Virginia Tech, though, wasn't he? Oh, he's hurt at Boston College? He, was hurt. he hurt. He broke his wrist against Boston College the first that's, game. Okay. All right. All right. So, so right. Anselm, he had six points and 15 boards, but. Uh, I mean, I think that the Virginia, the Virginia Tech game really Jesse could have helped us there with exactly um, because that was with a the points and everything s- down low. Seventy-one fifty-nine loss, and um, let's see, Anselm. Yeah, I mean, he he he, he did okay. That was his that was his fifteen rebound game, but yeah, but that was also where the power board, the uh, triple double, and Aluma had a really good game too. Yeah, down low. So again, like we talked to or talked about earlier. But yeah, I mean, it's fun to it's fun to sit here and kind of think about what could have been. But I mean, what is that going to do? But except depress us, no, because more could, mad should have, would have, could have. And you know the saying, you know, fifths and butts are king. That's where I have a Merry Christmas. That's the second time I broke it out. Yeah, well, I mean, fitting. it just it's it stinks because there's a lot of people. I mean, there's some fans. I think you are what your record is, right? Well, I, yeah, but then well, there's other I, people that are like, I, know, I don't believe that though. I mean, there's a lot of UNC fans that I was talking to, like, I can't believe you guys are 15 and 15. Like, you guys got a good team. Like, I can't, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like we're better than what our record shows, but we just had some bad games, some timely mistakes, and some bad <laughs> decisions. So. Well, here we go. I'm going to brace y'all. I'm going to bring Dominic on. His respect requested to speak in the green room. Dominic, mute yourself or forever hold yourself. Hold your peace. Hello, Dom. You're muted. And going once. And going twice. He's requested to speak twice. He's requested to speak twice, and I've approved them both. Mute button missing. There it goes. There we go. Oh, there it is. Oh, my gosh. Learn how to work the uh, app for crying out loud. Oh, Maroon. Hey. No, my phone fell asleep, and it does weird things, I guess, when that happens. Okay. Where are you at? 7-Eleven? I'm freaking working, damn it. <laughs> What's going on, Dom? What do you got? I, let me tell you something. Three quarters of the stuff that I say, I just love hearing you guys laugh because, especially after this season. 
just so you guys know. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> let me tell you something. Tell us something. I, Yes. Oh, you fire marshal Bill? Let me tell you something. I'm fired up. I'll tell you that. Did, did you read the comment that woman put to, to my comment? I didn't. Well, let me tell you something. I'm, I'm, let me tell I'm you tired something. of Syracuse fans. <laughs> <laughs> I, what's I the problem? Sick. I'm sick of Syracuse what's fans. The, what's they, the problem? They, just big babies. Just like they, they have no idea how good they have it when it comes to basketball. I mean, if they want to sit down and they want to complain about the years of, of sucking at football, I get it. But we're not the only program in the country that sucked at football for years. So, I, had, I mean... I, I had no idea you it, delivered mail on a golf cart, dude. Dude. It's amazing. This, 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 a golf cart, I think, has more power than these little white trucks. I'll tell you that. What, were, so, what was that on? Facebook? Let me find this. Yeah! All right. And so she's like, I hope he retires with his kids now. Oh, uh, like, okay. You, know, you should be ashamed of yourself. Now, I, I know your listeners, they have no idea who I am, where I live, or anything like that. So, but, you know, so, so they have some context of this. I live in Greenville, North Carolina, where East Carolina University is. It's an AAC school. It is a very, it's a, it's a good basketball conference. Some years it's, it's, it's above good. Some years it's below, but I mean, they Memphis and Houston. I mean, they all come into town, and like the people that I work with and go to church with that are East Carolina fans. And there's, even though it's it's East Carolina's here, there's more Carolina and Duke fans. But the East Carolina fans would give up Coach Dooley in a second for Bayheim right now, not Bayheim 10, 15, 20 years ago. They would take him now. And our, our fans, they don't, they're so spoiled. It just pisses me off. I yeah, mean, they're, they're, just come. They're finicky. They're, it's a finicky yes. fan base. It's a finicky fan I mean, base. It's a, a little wiry. A little wiry. So my friends who are. Who are oh, and he's gone. I tell you what, man. Does Dominic Hold not on. have cliff note virgins to there stories? Go. There he goes. There he goes. <laughs> so <laughs> the dudes that I work with that are – my son called me while, while I'm talking to you. He wants to tell me about baseball practice. So my friends at work who are Carolina fans, like the, the respect that Mayheim has amongst the other – and Joe, you, you live in Carolina, you know, yep. is, is tremendous. And our own fans don't even respect the dude. I don't get it. I just don't. I don't understand it. It, it is. They're, they're just. Oh, we want them to leave. We want them to leave. And I'm like, I would love to have like really logical conversations with them. Like, when was the last time UCLA has won a national championship? Like, even been relevant in basketball since Wooden has left. But look at Indiana, which which coached Knight. I mean, even after after Dean Smith left, it, it was a long period. Of, I mean, and the Carolina fans tell me how like gloomy it was those years until Roy came. Right? Are you are you on a construction site? No, it's a freaking mail truck! Damn it! Come oh, on! <laughs> what the hell uh, are the so, tax dollars paying for right there? No, th- hey, don't get me started on that. No tax dollars go toward postal stuff. It's all it's all postage. That's that's a that's a oh that well, a, well okay uh, that's not a postage is tax just so you know <laughs> <laughs> yes but you don't have to pay for it unless you want to mail something there you go no go ahead Joe Dom you're right no I was gonna say Dom you're right about that I think that um, you know I just think that there's been an expectation built in Syracuse and when we don't meet said expectation then you know those fans start calling for something different and I know it's been a lot. It's been very different since we joined the ACC with everything that we've we've gone through. But uh, I mean, I'm right there with you. I mean, there's there's Power Five uh, basketball teams that. I mean, I remember a couple years ago, like I mentioned in the podcast, Nebraska was the first time in like 20 or 25 years, something like that, where their basketball team made the NCAA tournament. Like, it's just ridiculous that you you know you can see teams like this that you know barely ever do anything in the postseason, and now because of one bad year all of a sudden let's go yeah and well, you yeah. know what i i used to deliver mail to to uh, ecu assistant coach the, the assistant head coach steve rocaforte 
Um, and so he was at Virginia Tech, came here to East Carolina, and now he's at, um, I think he's at a and he, he went back to, he was telling me how Bayheim is like the Mount Rushmore of college coaches. And the matter of respect, he's like, he's not a Hall of Fame for no reason. We do have a conversation before, before he moved away last year, just about college basketball and what it's like. And, and he, he was saying, this is how we recruit against Syracuse when I was at Virginia Tech. First off, Syracuse, the city, and the weather, they recruited against Syracuse that way. And he said it just got easy to recruit against Jim because of his age. And, of course, every coach is always going to say, yeah, I'm going to stay, I'm going to stay. But he goes, once a coach gets past 65, 70 years old, you're going to recruit because Jim doesn't get the one and dones. Like, oh, he's not going to be there. He's not going to be there. And where are your minutes going to come? Where are you, and, oh, Jim's doghouse. And you're going to be in his doghouse when you're a freshman, and then he's going to be gone, and then what's going to happen then? I mean, he, he would tell me this, but that's not necessarily, like, Jim's fault. I mean, so they have to recruit against that. But he's like, how do you recruit, you know, pro Syracuse? He goes, have you ever been there? I said, well, I lived there until I was two. I really haven't been there since. And so, like, he's like, it's not the greatest town, and you have the weather. And he goes, all these AAU kids are just coddled now, and if they have to do anything extra than normal, you know, it's it's an easier way to fruit against them. So it was – we have a Hall of Fame coach. We have a Hall of Fame coach. If you want to just quit. I don't care how old he is. It's just nonsense. I'm sorry, by the way. That, the woman just did, ruined, ruined my night last night, and, you know, it's – not really. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm, I'm glad we could be here for you to vent, Dom. That's what this yeah. is all about. Uh, yeah. Okay? Well, you know what? If I try to talk to my wife about it, she looks at me and is like, are you stupid? It's basketball. I yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, we, get, right we get it. <laughs> we, we get it. We get it. We get it. All right, hey, Dom. Look, we're, so, here, we're here hey, to guys. listen to, Dom. We're here to listen yeah, to. Just yeah, say, yeah, yeah. keep your hard hat on. Keep your hard hat on, Dom. <laughs> Get that hey, thing guys. into the shop ASAP, bro, okay? Before the damn wheels fall off of it. Hey, what the hell's hey, going hey. on over there? <laughs> Joe, are, are, you, you're a mechan- are, you, are you a mechanic? No, he just plays one in the, his dad's garage. <laughs> All right, so just imagine this. I The freaking truck has to break down before they fix anything. So, like, even even if I see, like, wear and tread on the tires, like, they won't do anything until the tire goes flat or if metal's showing. Oh, so do, they not, do, they not have showing. A, do they not have a preventative maintenance uh, schedule? No. Yeah. I can't tell you the yeah. last time, like, <laughs> it is, it, it's. It's a uh, problem. These, these things are death traps. Death well, traps. hey, look. Be I'm careful. Sorry. Wear, wear your seatbelt. Yes, always. Okay. All right, guys. Have a good night. Right, Dom, we love you. I, I, I kid because I care, okay? Just I know. So you know. I, right. Hey, that, that's why I give you guys the business, too. So okay, I'll well, talk to you later. We appreciate it. You take care, appreciate man. Have it. a good night. Go Orange. All right, bye. Okay. Well. Hey, look. What? Hey, Dom, sugar in the gas tank. Look, that I works. was just going to say, pull some freaking pull some <laughs> freaking spark plug wires on that thing. Something. 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 Get that thing to the shop. And please, please, don't call us until it comes back fixed, if you're going to be in it. Okay? We really, really appreciate you calling in, but my God, man. That's that's just delivering our ballots. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. Not mine. Not mine. Not mine mine that I know of. Hey, look. Is there any more comments? Because I wanted to talk about the refs. Is there not a comment about the? There rest? was a couple, dude, but I just, I just, am, I'm, it's, it's, I'm, I'm so tired. Uh, I'm so we did, tired of the bull crap. Just makeup calls. I know, I know. To call, how about you call? How one about of the, the one six can, times that Cole or Buddy got? Buddy hit, got hit hammered number. all game. I put it on Twitter. Like Buddy can't, can't even buy a foul right now. Buy a foul? Can't even buy a foul. Dude. Cole got hit a bunch of times, too, on jumpers. Yeah, he did get hit once in the arm. I have no idea how he hit all those shots. It was amazing to watch. Yeah. It was amazing. And it was unfortunate. Um. (laughs) Well, the band did that way. Yeah. Yes. Well, of course. But 
Oh, what they shot twenty free throws. We shot. There eight. was one. There was one. Seems about right. What was what was the one? Was it Benny Williams? When he's going for a rebound and he got knocked into the ball, knocked and, over. Yeah, and like and he they call they call Syracuse ball. Then they are like, oh no no, that was definitely off on Benny. Okay, so we're gonna give, give them the ball. But both of those calls are wrong because it should have been a foul. I mean, what the hell? Is going on when they said Syracuse ball? I'm like, oh, he's just giving us. I mean, it should be a foul. I was a little bit upset because I'm like, what well, should be our ball? But he should have a foul. It's usually the call they make, right? You would think so. I mean, he was right there. He was right there. How stupid was that? So frustrating. And see, now you got me fired up. All right, Sorry. look, we can't do it. We got to move on. The show must move on. All right, look. The all-time series between Syracuse and Miami sits at 20 and 10, okay? It's in favor of the Orange. We all remember the one-point loss earlier this year. Gerard with 26 points, Edwards with 22 points, and Swider with 20 points in an amazing game on January 5th of this year. Ken Palm has Miami ranked 63rd in his in his analytics with an adjusted offense ranked 19th and an adjusted defense ranked 155th. Ken Palm's also predicting a 80 to 79 win for Syracuse. Miami has slipped a little since playing Syracuse last time, but they've won 8 out of the last 14. So, they've had a couple close ones recently, the most recently against Virginia Tech. They lost at home by one. Uh, in over, um, not overtime, it was not an overtime game, 71 to 70. Uh, Miami's averaging 74 points a game, shooting 47% from the field and 35% from three. They are 62nd in the net rankings, making this a quad two game for Syracuse at home on senior night. Side note, Syracuse is currently 0 and 9 in quad one games for the year, and they are 3 and 1, though, in quad two games. So, um, the record there bodes much more well. And um, one could hope that they pull this off at home on senior night. Now listen, Jimmy's last game uh, in the Dome. Buddy's last game in the Dome. Most likely Cole Swider's last game as well in the Dome. And we're going to get five days off to recoup Get a couple of little ice, bath, ice baths in there, some practice, and hopefully yeah. come back uh, on a mission to make sure that this Syracuse team isn't the first one in 52 years to finish below 500. Joe, what do you think? Uh, I mean, I'm right there with you. I like the effort that we had last game. Uh, I think that we, we matched up with Miami. Well, we should have been able to beat them the first time that we played them. But, uh, I mean, we came back. They had a seven-point lead um, near the end of the, of the game, and we ended up coming back. I think Cole hit a three at the buzzer to make it a one-point game. But, um, nonetheless, uh, this was a game where Buddy really didn't play that well, but Jesse Edwards did. Uh, he was 10 of 13. He had 22 points, nine rebounds, seven blocks, two steals, two assists. I mean, this was one of his, you know, coming out party type games. Um, so not having him there is, I mean, he's going to be missed for sure. Um, Absolutely. But we also, yeah, yeah. And and we know, you know, Cam Augusti, Charlie Moore, those guys figured out the, the defense a little bit. Charlie Moore hit six out of 10 threes. Uh, Sam, Sam Wardenberg, he, he came off the bench and scored 29 points. So, um, the, the only thing really that helped us was, I mean, we, the, the two, three zone neutralized Isaiah Wong. I think we have to do a better job near the end of the game. He started driving, getting in, um, you know, uh, getting fouls, getting to the free throw line. And he actually had 14 points, eight and nine from the free throw line. So that's how he got his points there. And then they, you know, just, they, they Went 11 to 30 from the three, which isn't great for them. But Charlie Moore, if you remember, in some deep threes, was really the the big key to that game. Um, so this isn't a, a game that's out of the realm of, I mean, when you really look at it, we've been in every single game or had a chance against every team in the ACC other than Duke. Um, so that's kind of where I'm, where my stance is. That's, that's where I'm at. And, um, you know, we're going to have a chance at this game, especially at the Dome hoping that the fans can turn out and that they just didn't do, you know, a one hit wonder with Duke um, and give these guys a respect that, that they deserve. I mean, Sidibe uh, deserves a respect buddy for sure. 
And then, you know, Jimmy and Cole coming in and, and, and doing what they could this year. So, um, you know, hopefully we can go out there and we can win. And that's, I think, I mean, I don't want to say guarantee 500, but that's going to get us over 500, 500 in the conference. And, uh, I mean, you go 500 in the conference, you finish eighth. Even though we're not normally where we are or normally where we are expecting, it's still not an awful situation when you really look at it. <clears throat> no. I mean, not. I know it's not what the fans want to hear, right? Right. I know it's not that, but really, when you look at it in a conference where how many how many teams are there? Sixteen, fifteen, fifteen, and you're eighth. You went ten and ten. You're right there in the middle of the pack. There's still however many teams behind you. Um, it's not. It, it, we've talked about the ifs and, and, and buts and all that stuff, so we're not going to get into that. But this is definitely a game that we can win, and hopefully, we show up, fans show up, and we get this W. Got to have it, guys. We got to have this W. I think we should have won last night. I'm going to be quite honest with you. I mean, I think I feel like we should have won last night. a lot night. of games we should have won. Yeah. yeah, I know. But when you think about you know recency bias, and it's last night, obviously, right? No. And well, uh, so, look, and to Dom's point, too, about the fans, like there's been some nasty comments from fans this year. And that's how it is. But you got to remember, too, it's social media, man. You know, these people are upset. I'm not sticking up for them. They say dumb things. I mean, it's, it's not real you know i mean there's some smart ass comments every you know on facebook especially twitter but i mean whatever you know if you're going to give up on your team and you're going to post it for all to see then so be it i'm all for it i'm here mm. for that i'm here and for i that. hope those people have to eat crow yeah exactly and, not, then and, and how many years joe have they I mean, this has been this been the I mean, since this podcast has been going on, this is the sixth season for basketball for us. And yeah, uh, look, we, there was fans that said, "Day, let's just throw it in, let's throw it in the garbage, play Benny, start Benny, do all this. We're not going to do anything." And yes. then we went, what we won six out of seven, six out of eight, and then all those yeah. tunes changed. Almost technically, six out of seven, if you want them. Yes. If you want to make it look if better, you want to make it look better. Yes, you could do that. <laughs> so, um, all right, so Joe. Joe, Joe, Joe. Joe is going to be the champ of the regular season on his predictions. He takes this one. So that puts him three games ahead. I cannot, I cannot, I can't get there unless Syracuse makes a deep run, but he's got the regular season. So good job. Good job. How about that? Oh, good for you. So do what? How did I win? How did you win this one? Yeah. Oh, you didn't. I did. Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you for your honesty, Joe. I was testing you. Oh. I yeah. won. You're right. I won. Why was yeah, I looking? I, I was looking at that I totally know. wrong. I thank mean, I thank you for the. I mean, is this kind of? Is this a joke? Is this a prank? You just you got like, punked. I'll forget. I'll forget all, forget all of that. Forget all of that. Forget all of that. Because I actually won. I and, know so, that. and so. <laughs> and so. And so. Uh, I'm redoing this. I'm redoing it right now, so I don't <laughs> forget. Um, okay, boy, <clears throat> that could have been catastrophic. I'd have just given up on myself. All right, yeah, I, I, or did I? Maybe I did. Look, you did. I'll, I'll, I, I did. Just didn't let you. I did. I appreciate it. That's uh, what kind of friend I am. Oh boy. So look, <laughs> so look. Everything I said before I handed. The preview over to you is what I think does this for Syracuse. It's all emotion. And I really hope that that gives them the motivation to pull this thing out. I'm not going to lie. I will be totally crushed if Syracuse blows this game at home. And it would be par for the course this year. Hmm. But how upsetting would that be? You oh, don't. yeah, it would be, I'm right there with you as far as right. being upset. As, Absolutely. as far as and the, the emotional feel of things, it would be devastating. Like I mentioned, mm -hmm. Buddy, gone, Jimmy, gone, and then moving on. The, the whole Buddy Bayheim thing was such a blessing to Syracuse. Because if you think about it, where are we without Buddy the past four years? Or especially in the past two years, right? So, well, I mean, I'm not going to play devil's advocate there, but yeah, I get it. I mean, that's just how I feel. I mean, you, you can. No, I get it. 
it's it's yeah. one of the more bright spots. Yeah, and the kid's a good. COVID. He's a good freaking kid. He's been he's been through a lot to do with the program the past couple of years, like you said with COVID and everything. His whole life going making making a great run um, in the one year into the, finally winning some ACC tournament games, right? And mm. and having everything called off, missing a whole year of. Uh, tournament action because things were called off. Anyway, I've already said all this stuff. For that reason, I'm thinking. I'm thinking this. I'm thinking Syracuse wins, bro. Eighty-four to seventy-eight in reg- mm. in regulation. Joe, what do you think? Wow. That's bold, but yeah, I mean, I think you're right there. I mean, you're right there on there. I mean, Buddy and Jimmy. Syracuse has been their has been their lives. Not just the place, the college, the team. His did their dad, the coach, the head coach courts named after him the dome i mean everything has been their lives and, and it's about to you know come to a close and i think that it would be crazy if anybody thought that these guys weren't going to and even cole swider i feel like even cole swider this year listen to the way he's talked to some of his pressers and stuff i feel like he probably regrets his decision by going to villanova instead of Syracuse and he finally got to come here and he got to get one year in and you know what I mean he he played his his ass off last night and I don't expect anything different on Saturday with those guys um Barama same thing they're gonna leave it all on the floor they got nothing to lose they got days off like you said and I mean at the end of the day um I don't I pray that these guys come out and play the way that I think that they're gonna play um, because we haven't seen a day where all these guys go off, Joe. I mean, all of them normally don't hit. Some of them have bad days, and and I'm hoping to to see a game like that to where you know you can see everything just kind of work. Um, and it's tough without Jesse in there, but you know, I just I need something else, man. I can't have a situation where I, when I close my eyes and I think about the season, it's Joe Joe dribbling off his foot or us not being able to get a damn inbounds playing i I can't i that can't be what i remember from buddy Beheim's last year right yeah and and i don't think that he's gonna let that happen for for me or for any fans so um i'm right there with you i think it's gonna be a little bit lower but i think that they'll they'll get the w i think uh 80 80 74 that's where i'm gonna go 80 74 i only went that high because the last game was so high he got two great offensive teams and yep. mediocre defensive teams right so that's kind yeah. of i mean i could have almost went higher but i decided to go a little bit lower than the last time so no, any- dude i mean and if we come with the effort though if you remember because not until i just looked at this um we were we went into half. do you know what the score was 73 73 oh, oh oh going into halftime we were, yeah, well, so we were we, down by we lost 88 87 so the first time against miami oh know were we up by 18 was? at one point we were up forty-four to thirty at halftime. Okay, we were up by eighteen and we let at one Miami point in that game. Score Fifty-eight points. In yes. The second half. yes, fifty-eight yes. points, and they yes. won by one. That's right. I remember mm-hmm. that. I remember. Yeah. yeah, that's that was too bad. And and also, I thought that Miami was the real deal. I still think they're pretty good. They're they're a tournament team. Uh, yeah, I still Absolutely. think they're pretty good. They're twelve I mean, and they're, six in the ACC. They're they're actually fourth in the ACC now. By the way, mm-hmm. that changed. Over, yep. the, over the weekend. So, um, yeah, I mean, they're they're an excellent team, and they're, they are they beat Duke this year at Duke, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, no, I think they did. Uh, let me see. I think it was the game right after us. Yes, they did. 76 to 74. So, um, anyways, yeah, they could shoot, but their defense lacks in, you know, it's a different matchup, I think, for Miami with us. I think we match up pretty decent against them. So, Hoping that goes a long way, along with the the the, the emotional field, everything, and we'll see what happens. So, um, look, we really appreciate all of you who are still with us, joining us. Yeah. Every show, we really appreciate it. The sport has been great through this year, and uh, we love you guys. Really, really do. And uh, go Orange. Take a week off. We'll see you Sunday. Let's go. For Joe, I'm Sean. We're out of here. Peace.